Today, like it's Q3, we'll go through some images I've shot over the last month with this thing. We'll talk about some things I love about it, some things that could be improved, some accessories I think are just crucial for me using the camera personally. And we'll also, I'm also announcing my complete setup guide and downloadable profiles for those of you with the Q3. Hey everyone, it's Hudson. Welcome to this week's video. Uh, I've had, you know, kind of mixed responses to my passion for the Leica Q series cameras. And, you know, there's a whole group of people that are like, when is your Q3 review video and setup video coming out? For those people, today's the day. I have another group of people that are like, how can you spend so much money for a single fixed lens small camera? And for those people, I, I say, you know, maybe it's not the camera for everyone, but the quality and the precision and the ease of use of this camera and the fact that I have it with me all the time and just the way this particular little lens sensor combination renders the world has reignited a passion for taking photos in me in a way that's just a little bit different than using my bigger photo camera systems. Um, and I love it. So, you know, it, 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 yes, it's a premium product, but to me it is, it is absolutely worth the price that they charge for it. It's just an incredible little machine. So if you're interested in the complete setup guide, I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna look at some images from this camera. I'm gonna talk about some of the things I love that they've done with the Q3 in comparison to the Q2. Uh, some accessories that I absolutely think are essential for this camera. Uh, but if you have your own Q3 and you've already made some of those decisions, maybe you look through the accessories section of this uh, maybe you enjoy this, but there's a setup video. You can click right here. Uh, you can also click down in the video's description and I've got the setup guide for both the Q3 and the Q2. They're different. You're gonna wanna go one or the other. And I've decided that because of the simplicity of this camera and the beauty of the way their profile system works without nuking the default settings of the camera, I'm fine with people downloading this. You know, it's not like you're gonna get lost in my settings. It's a simpler, world in the Q2, Q3. So I'm putting downloadable links to my exported profiles from both the Q2 and the Q3, they're different, uh, in links in the setup videos for both the Q2 and the Q3, I'll put, I'll put the setup video, those, those downloadable links. And in this video's description, links to the Q2 setup video, links to the Q3 setup video, and links to those downloadable profiles. So what's so great about the Q3, aside from the fact that it just has this kind of unbelievable 1.7, 2.8 lens, mated and built around a pairing with this 60 megapixel sensor. You know, the, the things that are really changed from the Q3, in the Q3 from the Q2 that I had before, obviously the tilt screen, that's less important to me, although it does make waist level shooting in incognito situations or just getting a little less up in people's face, uh, a nice way to just run around and, and frame up and shoot. And it's also nice when you're down low on the ground and you don't have to get all the way down and look at the back of the camera or up above your head in some kind of a venue shooting over the crowd. It's, it's nice, it's, it's, a, it's a nice thing and they built it in a really durable, nice kind of fa fashion. It also moved the control layout. It gave us extra function buttons, which I'll go over in the setup menu, but now you have four programmable buttons. There are two function buttons to the, to the right of the thumb rest, and then there's the control wheel button, which is programmable, and the back center button on the D-pad is programmable as well. And all those buttons can now access nearly every function in the camera, which actually can be a little overwhelming when you're trying to decide which function you wanna pick for it out of a mile long scrollable list. So one of the things I do in my setup video is limit those down to functions that make sense on each button and kind of cover the broad range of functions you might want on those buttons so that you select from a list of five instead of a list of 60 every time you go to change which function that button's doing. Yeah, I love the manual controls of this. You know, I, I love the, the, the manual focus, the way that it jumps in, zooms into 100% and peaks, and just the clarity of looking through this high, high resolution, fast frame rate electronic viewfinder. It's just a joy to work with. It becomes relatively quickly once you learn to use this camera, just an extension of you that just, for me, lets me capture images in a different way 
than any lens combination and, and body combination in the Nikon world that I've been using for decades. Uh, the 60 megapixel sensor is amazing. It's an advancement over the old, I think it was 47 megapixel sensor in the uh, Q2. And somehow it even renders the world a little bit better in low light situations in high ISO, even though it has more megapixels. So the cropability just got even more insane. Um, it's, it's got uh, just some wonderful, wonderful features too that they added on that I really wanted, like USB-C charging and data downloading. Uh, the fact that I can just plug a USB-C cord into this and power delivery capable charger and it will charge the camera just as rapidly as plugging the battery into a portable charger makes it really easy to charge on the road or in the camera bag with a power delivery capable battery brick. I'll talk about that when I get into accessories that I use with this camera. Um, it also just has a little bit better auto focusing than the old version. I love to manual focus static subjects, but its tracking capabilities and ability to lock onto a subject and follow it are better than the last versions. It's a little bit quicker processing. Everything just seems a little crisper. Um, the button layout, the way it's all moved to the right side of the camera body in the back versus the left side on the Q2 is nice. I think the menus have a little bit more modern look. They're a little bit bigger and easier to read and a little bit crisper in their text. Um, I think that one of the great features that they changed on the Q3 over the Q2 is letting you choose any shutter speed down to 120 seconds at any ISO. And the ISO range has been boosted all the way up to 100 ISO. Uh, so you can go down to 50 all the way to 100,000 ISO. And now you can shoot 100,000 ISO at 120 seconds if you so desired. Whereas with the Q2 and earlier cameras, as you boosted the ISO, it limited the duration that the shutter could be open to protect the sensor, I guess, from overexposure. I don't know. But at any rate, now the sky is the limit, literally, for doing night photography, uh, which is a great thing. Although I think there's a little bit of coma in this lens wide open. I'd still probably rather use my Nikon for, for night work. But... In a pinch, this does a really fine job shooting in low lit situations. I'll show you a, a really beautiful image, really long exposure, 48 second exposure of a bridge on my Oregon Coast workshop. Um, the sensor's just beautiful. It really is an upgrade, this sensor. Um, I think that's about all that's really changed. Otherwise, it feels really, really similar. Um, some things that I don't love about it are the fact that they gave us, you know, an HDMI out or in, and a USB-C port to bring data and charging in and out of the camera, but there's no microphone port. It has really beautiful video. I mean, check out this uh, little video of my my new uh, nephew. He's actually a cousin, but he's like I'm, I'm Uncle Hudson to him, uh, Leon. Hmm. So you can tell the onboard mic isn't terrible, but for real professional video work, it would have been nice for them to have one more port for an external mic. Um, so, and you know, it even would be nice to have a headphone jack to monitor audio, but maybe they will come up with an accessory and hopefully it's HDMI because that would be nice to not burn the USB-C port so that you can plug it in and be charging it while you're filming video. I know it's not primarily a video camera, but it does ProRes video and 8K video and not having a way to bring really high quality audio with, with off-camera mics is a bummer. You know, it does these cropped views. I'll showcase it when I do my full setup video, but when you hit to crop in and go to different frame lines in the camera, it's like choosing full frame versus DX mode on a, on a, on a mirrorless camera from Nikon or Canon or Sony. Instead of zooming in to give us a full frame view of the cropped image cropping in on the sensor to let us compose and frame a little bit bigger, it throws a frame line in. And I know that that's traditional from the range finders of old and then Leica is a very traditional company. So instead it draws a little square where you frame inside that square or a smaller for 35, at, you know, which is still a lot of megapixels. And then you crop down to, to 50 meg, uh, millimeter equivalent. I think at 28 megapixels, you got, or 28 millimeter equivalent, you have 60 megapixels. At 35, you have 39 megapixels. At 50 millimeters, you got 
20 megapixels, essentially 19 megapixels. If they're 70 millimeter crop, you get uh, eight megapixels. And if they're 90 millimeter crop, you get six megapixels. So sort of like my old Nikon D70 way back in the day. But, you know, the nice thing is that you can sort of frame using those crop lines. The bummer is that there's no option to have it zoom to that in the EVF and on the back LCD. You're only looking at a little box as you shoot. And I think it would be nice if they gave you an option in the menu, whether you want it to zoom in and fill the frame so that it's easier for you to compose a distant subject. I know it's tradition, but you know, it'd be nice since they've got some things that go against Nikon, or I mean, since against Leica's traditions with autofocus, for example, maybe they give us uh, a zoom into the crop lines as an option too. So that's just a kind of wish for a future firmware update. Um, I think it'd be nice, the, the, the control layout, you can custom program all of these four buttons, the function one, function two, thumb wheel and center button to, to, to only do certain functions like I talked about. It's kind of a process of elimination. I only want these options when I long press that button to switch options. Sadly, the pr that, so you can do that in, in your photo shooting that can be programmable one way. When you flip it in video mode, you can program those buttons completely differently. Uh, and that's cool. I show that in the, in the setup video. Sadly, the, the, the profiles, when you create profiles for the camera, those profiles cover both video and still shooting. It'd be nice if you could have separate profiles for video shooting as from separate profiles for stills. I know a lot of my complaints are video related and you know a lot of people aren't buying this as a video camera, but it's a very beautiful and capable video camera as those little examples I showed uh, showed. And the other thing that's a bummer to me is not at all, well, it's just a little bit of Leica's fault, but <clears throat> for the Q2, Really Right Stuff made a grip L bracket that put an Arca dovetail on the side of the camera, below the camera, and a QD port for using my favorite strap from Luma Labs with the QD port connection. Um, they're not planning on making one for the Q3. If you have a desire for one, it was just an amazing L bracket. It worked so well, it fit so well with the camera, it created such a nice grip, the battery and memory card were still accessible through the base of it. Um, but they didn't have enough demand, I'm guessing. Uh, so, you know, they said that they'll monitor demand. If enough people call in, they'll consider making one or if enough people email or call them. Uh, but right now they have no intention. And I find this camera very difficult to use without a grip. Uh, I've looked at some of the grips out there, I, it, none of them, sort of fulfill all the features that I want with an L bracket and a QD port. The Leica grip that's a wireless charging grip, which is pretty darn sweet, um, doesn't have an Arca Swiss plate attachment. I really wish that at least the base of it were Arca Swiss. It doesn't have QD, it doesn't have Arca Swiss. It also blocks the battery and the memory card ports. It's easy to take on and off, but that's really less of a big deal because of the power delivery capable charging. You know, it, it takes a minute to switch batteries if you need to in the field by pulling the grip off. Uh, but the wireless charging to me makes it worth it. I really do dig that. So it's kind of a kind of a, a, a plus and a minus. One thing that is not suffering in this camera one bit is image quality. Let's jump over and I'll go through some images that I captured with this camera and then I'll talk about the accessories that I just find critical for use with it. All right, so I haven't had the Q3 that long. I haven't been shooting it with, that th with it that long, but you know, I have been shooting for quite a while with the Q2. Uh, and, and I knew some things I wanted to test, some things I wanted to see with the Q3, and I've had an opportunity. I've taken it on my uh, Oregon Coast workshop a couple of weeks ago here, and, and I'll share some of the results and why, I, why I'm more than happy uh, upgrading from the Q2 to the Q3, despite the fact that there's nothing wrong with the Q2. But that 60 megapixel sensor, you know, my, my first question was, is, uh, the, the, the 28 1.7 lens that they've been using on the Qs from the beginning really capable of handling that 60 megapixel sensor. And I will just say, absolutely. You know, I, I wanted to shoot wide open into, you know, complicated backlit scene uh, and, and, and have a look in high contrast at how it handled it. And here is just, you know, straight out of the camera. If I, if I open it up in develop here, we can close down our left panel. 
So we get a little more room. You know, you can see it's like, it's a pretty high contrast seam with this sky back here. You can see that that 60 megapixels is pretty darned incredible. Um, the, I was using eye detect autofocus here. I had Pepper posing for me a little bit. If I go and pull my whites just a little bit back and then take my highlights down, you can see I can recover those, those highlights without getting ugly. Um, there's no more pure white in the scene and the way that it renders those those highlights at the same time You know you can go ahead and and pull your shadows up a little bit if you wanted to use Lightroom's masking You could grab your subject and just say let's pop my little girl pepper up just a tiny bit in exposure Just a tiny bit in shadows and then maybe boost contrast on her just a little tiny bit um, boom Crazy, huh? And we did, it did put the highlights in her, back in her hair. I can pull those back out so that we're not quite as blown as before. It's just the way it renders is beautiful. And the files are deep and very, very dynamic. There's lots of dynamic range, ability to capture highlight and shadow. And it just looks beautiful doing that, whether you're in black and white or color. And this is using, you know, that, 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 standard sort of uh, metering, not the highlight weighted. You do the highlight weighted, you'll have darker shadows. The, the, the standard sort of multi-field metering in the Q3 really focuses in on people and subjects. Um, and it'll let the highlights go a little bit and that's not necessarily a bad thing with this camera. I just love the way that it exposes people in that standard sort of metering mode. Yeah, this was at night, I linked it up Lickety split with my Leica Photos app on my phone. I'm using an Android. I use the Pixel 7 Pro and I was remote controlling it, sort of holding it in my hand during reading time at bedtime and Pike was looking into it and I focused and shot from my phone. And, and one of the reasons I throw this in here, if I pull up information on this, is ISO 1000. This is straight out of camera and I'm just kind of blown away how this 60 megapixel sensor uh, is, is dealing with high ISO. That's a pretty clean high ISO image and you can see you know, there's a little bit of noise but it, it's almost filmic in the way that it renders noise. And just to go into that with a little a little more testing, you know, here's 6400 ISO. We were at a, a, a house concert, uh, one, of our, one of my wife's uh, patients actually threw a little concert in his home not far away and we went in the evening and I don't know this gentleman but he was sitting in front of me and the light was nice and he looked entranced by the music. So. You know, I'm going to jump into develop, and, and I have a few different versions of this. This is, this is just straight out of the camera. Um, and you can see that at 6400 ISO, that 60 megapixel sensor is rendering some noise. But I think you can see what I mean about it being a little more filmic than digital noise. It's, it's not a bad noise. Look at those books on the bookshelf. Um, here's what happens if I do a little bit of, of manual detail editing, you know, just jumping into the detail panel, pulling sharpening, pulling masking. I always like to use the masking slider while I'm holding down the option key to sort of say, I, I don't want to be sharpening the noise in the image. I really want to only be sharpening the detail edges that matter to me in this particular scene. So I can sort of be able to crank up sharpening without sharpening the noise that's in the image and then do some noise reduction. Again, I hold down the option key to not see the color while I'm doing that. And then, you know, going in and doing just a little bit of masking of him and of uh, the background scene and some exposure work. This is just a straight up, you know, doing all manual controls in Lightroom. I also ran it through Lightroom's incredible you know, denoise algorithm. Let's just jump back into our um, jump back into our, our full view here and have a look at this at 100%. So <coughs> this is letting Lightroom demosaic this with an eye towards reducing noise uh, while maintaining detail, and then just doing a little bit of exposure adjustments with the sliders. And I mean, man, that's pretty incredible for 6400 ISO on a 60 megapixel sensor. And I think that Lightroom's new denoise algorithm is just fabulous. And again, you get to that in the develop panel. Um, you, you go up here and we're in develop here. And instead of, um, you know, in the manual mode, you click this denoise. We've already applied it to this photo. It creates a brand new enhanced noise reduction DNG file. 
So that's what that's what the second file. If I go back to my grid and I look at this, you'll see that this is the file I did manually. And right next to it, this is the file I did. Um, oops, I did with denoise and I hit crop there. There's a little crop applied too. So if we go back and forth, and if I zoom in, not bad, but wow. Um, this sensor is capable of great things at high ISO. You know, just the way the sensor renders things. You know, this is at my mom's farm with the kids and her really tame pet llama Patty that she bottle raised and Pike playing with a piece of bamboo in the woods. You know, just that, that amazing, amazing, everything being sharp that you want and the way the focus falls off. It's just a special lens. Um, you know, I'm using uh, my field, um, um, focusing because I, I find that when kids are moving and active using the the face eye detect can kind of hang up when when I can press the button they wants to get a perfect lock on the eye and sometimes I'm trying to hit it for that decisive moment it won't clip so I tend to use eye and face for real portrait setups where it's static um, working with the subject and then I did a little tracking testing at the autofocus is tracking significantly better than the Q2 they're upgraded um, autofocus uh, sensor detection and their faster processing in the Q3 <clears throat> really have added up to, to an ability to track subjects better. Here's Pepper and Patty cruising toward me um, at F5.6, you know, definitely having to track on Pepper's eye or track. I had her on the tracking box, not so much eye detect, but the, the tracking um, doing a great job there. And what a fun image. I wish I hadn't clipped uh, Patty's ear. I might have to use some of uh, Photoshop's uh, amazing new content uh, aware fill, that AI fill. Just, you know, I mean, there's something special about the way this little 28 millimeter renders scenes. This is on a little hike with Pike and Pepper's friend Ransom and, you know, throwing it into that, that field mode and putting it on Pike's face at 28 millimeters. It just nails it. And then uh, I really had a chance to put it through its paces on our Oregon Coast workshop. Here's here's my buddy uh, and constant workshop attendee, one of my one of my favorite people to see show up on workshops, Gary Sherlock, uh, at the uh, at the Yakina uh, Head Lighthouse near Newport, where we had our workshop. And you know, w one of the things I love with this camera, I talked about it, uh, you know, at the desk is the is the ability to zone focus. You know, you set f11 and you put the infinity symbol right on, uh, so that so that the, it's on the marker for f11 or just a little inside it, and you'll get as close a focus as possible all the way to infinity, all in focus. And that's how you get these tiny little rocks on this beach all razor sharp and in focus at the same time as the lighthouse and the people around the lighthouse. I don't even need to manually focus with peaking or autofocus. I just set that gauge on the lens with the with the hyperfocal distance gauge and boom, you're locked in, you know. I love that. Um, again, just the way it renders scenes. I saw Rick lining up this shot with his Q2 and just, you know, the way it keeps what you want sharp and what you don't want. I, I shoot this thing wide open so much. Um, I did find that, you know, when I was shooting the Q2, I found that every aperture was just beautiful. Now with 60 megapixels, it's still, every aperture is great. This is F11 at the Yakina Bay Bridge. Again, doing that hyperfocal trick where I just set the, the, the focus ring at hyperfocal distance on F11, aligning the marks on the, on the lens barrel and the focus ring. And then I thought, hmm, I wonder if f16 is still as good. And at 60 megapixels, you start noticing a little bit of diffraction. It's still very good front to back. I mean, there's nothing to complain about. This would stomp most lenses at f16. But I'm noticing it's just a little bit sharper at f11 than it is at f16. You know, you go back and forth here. That's f16. This is f11 just seems like you're getting a little diffraction showing up at 60 megapixels that I didn't notice back with the Q2 and its lower resolution sensor. But that 60 megapixels, you know, look at the details in this scene zoomed into 100% and the details in the bridge standing under it. Now look at the whole scene. <laughs> this is amazing. I, I can't quit looking at it. You know, even zoomed in to 200% on this 4K sensor, I mean, Wow, yeah. So the lens stands up to the, the new 60 megapixel sensor 
just no problem. Uh, pretty darn incredible. Low light, you know, this is a, a 48 second exposure at F11, ISO 400. Uh, it was, you know, the, everything was gone to dark. Sadly, the bridge lights were green and red and it really made for kind of a garish scene. So going to black and white really worked out here. Um, but, you know, definitely a capable camera. And I love the fact that you can go with longer exposures at higher ISO in a way that they limited you out of with the Q2. You can do 120 seconds at 6400 ISO if you want to with this camera, or even 100,000 ISO. I just love the dreamy way that you can have a bit of a blurred background here, you know, we're a thousandth of a second. And it's not, not bright, but we had a bit of weather and it let us work in some foggy scenes, you know, and just, you look at this nice soft scene, but if you were to go to print it, look at how much detail is in the bark of the tree. And F13, I'm not seeing too much diffraction. Still, this looks beautiful. The macro mode comes in so handy. Just flip that ring to macro, just like the other cute cameras, and it bumps the lens out from the body and gives you a completely different depth of field gauge. Love the way that shoots scenes. 28 millimeters at you know f 2.8 becomes your maximum aperture when you bump out. But it's just an incredible little macro machine when you start working with it. We went to Thor's well, and I set it up on a big tripod with the universal L bracket from uh, from Acrotech. And my Kirk, um, my Kirk Arca Swiss plate, and shot Thor as well with it. 28 millimeters was really, really a nice way to shoot that. We'd gotten it dialed in. We knew exactly when the tide was going to be right and when the wave height looked like it was predicted to be right. We got the group there on a wonderful, wonderful day to be out there photographing that. And then later that evening, we had been out scouting at the Hasita Head Lighthouse, one of the most beautiful lighthouses and uh, looking at different positions. And then that evening, after we photographed Thor as well, we went to dinner in, Thor in, in Florence as a big group and then went back to Hasita Head. And you could tell the clouds were lining up just beautifully. And having scouted, I knew that 28 millimeters would be all I needed. And I ran up to this lighthouse and just handheld this shot. Um, you know, it's at 28 millimeters, everything in this scene is pretty much at infinity from me. I stopped down just a little tiny bit for the, for the grass and the bushes in the foreground. But I think you can see there's plenty of detail. You can even see seal rock back there or, or seal, sea lion caves way back there in the background and a bird off in the sky as the beach rolls around down towards Florence. Just a beautiful evening and this little camera can create some pretty epic 60 megapixel images for you. So I'm more than happy with the performance out of this sensor lens and the way that this camera handles and works. All right, so really quick rundown. I'm gonna put links to all of these accessories in this video's full description. You can just click on the title or show more on the video and it'll drop down. You can see a chapter dot table of contents uh, along with links to the setup video, the downloadable profiles and all of these accessories. I tried Leica's button. They're like, there's a little threaded capability of putting a, a soft touch button on the shutter release on this camera and it seemed to me too tall and a little awkward looking on the camera. Uh, plus it was $70 and I ordered this set of three shutter release buttons for I think, were they $12.95? I have it written down here. Um, $12 for three of them from Amazon and it comes with a brass and a black and a silver and I just, I really like the way the silver button looks and feels on the camera better. So I sent that like a $70 one back. Um, again, I really like the wireless charging grip. I know they're in limited supply. They'll be coming into stock. They work great in conjunction with Native Union's wireless QI charger. Uh, all I do is set the camera down here, sort of just a little off to one side. It's not dead center and you'll see a green light on the back start flashing as it charges and it goes solid. It's flashing right now, charging goes solid when it's fully charged. It's a really nice way to charge your camera. Now, Native Union makes Leica's branded charger too. It says Leica Wetzler uh, on the front. The Leica version costs $175. If you go on Amazon through the link in this video's description, 
The exact same one from Native Union is 70 or no, $80 on Amazon. So it, the only difference is it doesn't say Leica mm -hmm. and there's a little dot on the center of each charger side. There's, it's a dual charger. You can also charge your phone and your headphones on it when you're not charging your camera. Uh, but you know, I, I find I have no problem lining the camera up on it and getting the green dot, you know, either direction. So I'm just saying, you know, 175 versus 80. Plus, you can't get the Leica one. It's out of stock, and this one's in stock, and it looks identical. Um, the wireless grip's 195 bucks, so it's not a cheap deal to get the wireless charging. You know, 80 plus 195 plus a weight on the wireless grip. The grip, to me, is just critical. Um, I'm actually having a machinist do some work. We're working, my friend Chap uh, Jackson and I are working to try to create an ARCA grip with QD for this camera, but we'll see where all that goes. Stay tuned on that. You know, one thing I think is absolutely essential, the Leica comes with this little metal cap. And when it's brand new, it's felt lined and it fits nicely over the little um, metal hood that threads on the front of the lens. But as it wears, it starts falling off. And so I just put mine back in the box to keep it brand new. And I got this nice press fit rubber cap from Match, which I just think is an absolutely essential accessory for the camera. Um, it's 50 bucks, but you know, I, I've got a link to that. I, I, it sits on there. It doesn't fall off. It protects everything. It's easy peasy. Um, I use that all the time. I also use my case magnetic 82 millimeter filters on this camera a fair bit. You thread that, um, you thread that little square rectangular hood off and I've got a, um, a, a quick, easy to use adapter here. I'll put the magnetic case adapter along with the filters and the links here. But this is a, um, a 49 to 82 millimeter step up magnetic ring. And I've got it set up in here with a magnetic cap and a polarizer that just spins right on the mount. Easy to use, doesn't need to be thick. You don't have to worry about vignetting with 82 millimeters on 49 anyway. And then in this little case, I have three, six, and 10 stop neutral density filters. Really nice neutral, neutral density filters. You can throw all three of them if you desired on there as easy as that, or pull the 10 stop off and have the three and the six for nine, or just to use the three. Simple as that. The system is so easy. The cap is simple to throw on there. It just works great. And sometimes in brighter conditions when you want that ultra wide aperture, um, it's just nice to have polarizing, you name it. Uh, I, I have those with me when I have the camera and it's as easy as threading that off and threading that 49 to 82 adapter on there. I still like to use big filters. Plus most of us probably have more cameras than just the Q2 or the Q3, you know, if you really want a smaller set of case filters, um, those I sell directly through my store. And if you want a whole set for your Leica, hit me up, you know, we can work on that or I can provide you links to other sizes, but 82 works great. And then it's super, super uh, easy to use with other cameras. I've been using it in this Think Tank uh, mirrorless mover 10 case. With its little uh, match cap, it slips in there just perfectly. There's a magnetic closure plus a zipped closure. The bag comes with a little waterproof cover. It's got a nice shoulder strap. It carries really well. It's adjustable. And then it's got some cool little accessory pockets and things, uh, obviously. There's a nice business card holder where I keep a spare SD card behind the, the, my business card in there. There's a front pocket and in there I've got a lens cleaning cloth, a few things, a spare battery. The spare battery is expensive, but I think it's a little bit cheaper than the q 2 spare battery was. I have no idea why. They're interchangeable, but you get more battery life out of the new one that came with the Q3. So I keep that up front in this little pouch. And then there's a stretchy, I have another cleaning cloth in this pocket over here. And then there's a stretchy mesh pocket that has an accessory that I find just critical. And I keep it in there with a five millimeter Allen wrench. And that is this little Kirk uh, Universal um, Arca plate. And I throw it on with its ledge on the front of the wireless charging grip and just thread it on and it 
goes on there, locks in tight, and provides me with a QD port and an ability to lock it in via Arca Swiss to my featherweight tripod, which I, I carry this with a ton. These are my custom made, um, you know, three pound featherweight tripod um, that gets up to eye level and is nice and rock solid and easy to use with a leveling adapter and an Acrotech uh, GXP SS head that holds 50 pounds. So having that Arca connector lets you work with the tripod. Being able to throw it on my QD loop strap from Luma Labs that I love and use constantly is the real key to it. So that way, if I don't want to have the case with me and I just want to run with the camera, it's as easy as, you know, I can sling it just like that and have it access to it to use when I want it tucked up snug so it's not flopping around as I hike. I can either have it in the front right there or I can have it in the back right there and it's as accessible as that. So that's the way I like to sling all my cameras from the Z9 to the Q. I use this one strap, push a button, it's off, push a button, it's on. Um, again, I wish I had the really right stuff. Grip with the QD port uh, and the L bracket but and the grip, but it's not too bad to be able to throw that guy on there. Power delivery capable battery brick. I like this 20,000 milliamp one from Anchor. Um, this fills up my Z9 battery twice, so I have no doubt it's gonna fill up this Leica battery three or four times. And you can run the camera while it's plugged into this. If you're gonna use a different battery than this, you just make to, need to make sure that it's rated for power delivery capability. It's PD, there's a little PD rating on the battery when you're buying it. I've got a link to this one in this video's full description. There's one other thing I sometimes use, uh, I have used this camera with, I don't know if everybody's gonna want it, but I just, I'm not happy without an L bracket. Again, you hear me, that's my biggest complaint with this is that I don't have a good viable L bracket with a QD port. So one thing I have done with this is I use this little half pound Acrotech. They're so amazing with their lightweight gear. Universal L bracket, which has an Arca clamp, an Acrotech Arca clamp in conjunction with that Kirk universal Arca clamp and I can lock into my tripod vertically or horizontally and it's rock solid. You know, there's no, no give whatsoever. I was actually photographing that stuff at Thor's well on the coast with this particular setup in the most gnarly of conditions. So it's a bit of, you know, a workaround, but it does work. I already had that laying around for some other purpose so it's a great universal L bracket so at any rate those are the accessories that I can't live without using my Q3 in the field but more often than not it's literally just slung on my side on the QD loop or it's in this little bag with a spare battery and memory card so there you go I love the camera I know some people may find it overpriced. Leica is one of those premium companies creating a premium product. There's not much that's wrong with this camera. I love the way the menu structure works. I love some of the capabilities of it, like exposure bracketing and interval shooting and low light shooting. And it just becomes an extension of me when I'm using it. So I love the camera. You got questions or comments, hit me up about them. Uh, while you're watching this, I'm on my way back probably or soon to be back from Yellowstone and Moab. We're going to be having an office hours session on October 10th, 10 a.m. Pacific. I'm pretty sure it's October 10th. That's a Tuesday. If not, it's the Tuesday closest to that. Um, so sign up for that at hudsonhenry.com slash office hours. You can click right here or in this video's full description like all the other links I've been pointing out. Uh, Thanks again for watching. Remember there's a full setup video linked in this video's description along with downloadable profiles for both the Q3 and the Q2. Links for those uh, as well as a link to the Q2's full setup video. It's a great camera too. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you're staying safe, staying creative. We'll see you next week.